Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Have hope. Ah, thank you so much, and welcome to Captain's party. Each Tuesday, we're here for your pleasure. Here's hoping we give you good measure. Again, hello, and here we go. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob Hope. Well, here I am back again for Pepsodent, and I'm just as surprised as you are. You know, <laughs> after last week's show, letters and telegrams are still pouring in from people all, all over the country. All I can say is they don't know a good program when they hear it. <laughs> I might have been a little jittery last week, but I don't have to worry. The Philharmonic Orchestra heard me, and they want me. They want to use my knees for castanets. <laughs> Not that I was nervous, but how would you feel if the first report you heard was the sponsor beating his head against the wall? <laughs> I called him up and asked him how I was coming over. He said, hope you're not coming over. You're going under. <laughs> they thought I was nervous last, last week, but you should have seen Bill Goodwin. Bill put his hand on the table to steady himself and got three messages from the spirit world. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Bill, tell our audience who's with us tonight, will you? Sure thing, Bob. The charming Warner Brothers star, Miss Olivia de Havilland. We have Skinny Ennis and his band, Six Hits and a Miss. Jerry Colonna, also through the courtesy of the Brothers Warner. And Jack Smart. Oh, thank you, Bill. That's Bill Goodman, ladies and gentlemen. Stout fellow. Say, Bill, by the way, what did you hear about our first show? Nothing, Bob. I stayed in the house all week. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I'm all right. I was just wondering how the sponsor feels. Oh, I wouldn't worry about him, Bob. Yeah. After all, how long can a man carry a grudge? <laughs> well, I got a letter from my brother. He thought the program was great. Oh, really? Did he? How'd the warden like it? <laughs> hey, listen, Bill, don't kid about him. He's, he's doing all right at Alcatraz. He has a slot machine concession. <laughs> And it's too bad he was taking out a circulation. He used to make money hand over fist like a machine. In fact, he did make it with a machine. The government's mad at him now for something he printed on a dollar bill. I'm not sure. I think it was any similarity between these dollar bills and the ones Uncle Sam makes is purely coincidental. He's a wise guy. He used to make the $10 bills in the daytime and the $20 bills at night. <laughs> you know, when he worked nights, he used to pay himself overtime. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about my relatives too much, not that I haven't any. In fact, so many relatives call at my hotel, the revolving door keeps the whole place air-conditioned. <laughs> you know, you take that fellow from Arkansas, you know, when you listen to him, he's always talking about his relatives. He should meet my Uncle Lucifer. <laughs> He's always taking things around the house. I went to sleep last night, and this morning I woke up in the pawn shop window. <laughs> I'll put that back in the oxygen tent. Say, uh... I, I think it's about time we hear from our band leader, Skinny Ennis. Hello, Skinny. How are you, Bob? Say, by the way, Skinny, what did you hear about the show? Well, Bob, uh, my mother, now she has all the funny programs on the air, and, well, she... She thinks you're different. <laughs> well, that's very nice, Skinny. Yeah, she sent me a review about you uh, out of one of the newspapers, Bob. It sounded uh, something like a weather report. A weather report? Yeah, here it is. Bob Hope. Light flurries of applause with occasional laughter. Quite foggy, but probably fair next week. <laughs> well, that's different anyway. Here comes Jerry Colonna. I'll get a sensible answer out of him. <laughs> Greetings, Gates. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Jerry, how did your brood like the broadcast last week? Oh, yes! My cousin Willie enjoyed it conclusively. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, tell me, Jerry, did he think I was droll? I knave. There's quite a difference between droll and drool. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I'm glad your cousin Willie enjoyed it anyway. So am I. It's been so hard to keep him happy since he went out of his head. <laughs> well, what's the difference as long as he liked the program? He enjoyed the program so well that next week we're going to put tubes in the radio. Oh, <laughs> uh, check anyway. Hey, Bob, uh, by the way, uh, you want the officers to uh, laugh and applaud this week? Oh, of course. Let them enjoy themselves. Okay, boys. Double pay this week, too. <laughs> Kenny, I think you better play a number. Come in. Are you Jack Benny? No, I'm Bob Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, too. <laughs> Come in. Uh, Mr. Hope? That's right. On behalf of the vast radio audience, I want to present you with this beautiful loving cup. Oh, gee, that's a beauty. What's it for? It's for distinguished service to radio during the summer of 1938. But I wasn't on the radio this summer. You got the cup, haven't you? <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> say, I... I should never put a door on this program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our six hits of the myths give you their interpretation of don't cross your fingers, cross your heart. Take it, talent. <laughs> When you put your arms around me and you say you're glad you found me, don't cross your fingers, cross your heart. When you tell me with your kisses what a real moment this is. Don't cross your fingers, cross your heart. Please make your mind up that you must play fair, or you will wind up playing solitaire. Here's my heart, come on and take it, only dumbest you will break it. Don't cross your fingers, cross your heart. <laughs> Try to understand it, comprehend it, that is all you gotta do. Don't cross your fingers, won't you cross your heart? Love cat. Be retarded, disregarded, baby, that'll never do. Don't cross your fingers, cross your heart. Please make your mind up that you must play, baby, be true. It is essential. You'll wind up playing solitaire. one of you is bound to win if you take advantage of the special one-cent sale on Pepsodent antiseptics. Now, most merchandising men acknowledge that the American housewife is the world's shrewdest buyer. She not only has an uncanny sense of values, but she refuses to be deceived by bunkum or ballyhoo. That's why I'm merely going to announce simply, straightforwardly, that for a limited time, you can actually get two full-size 50-cent bottles of genuine Pepsodent antiseptics for just one penny more than the regular price of one bottle. Yes, for only one cent more. Thus, Pepsodent's great one-cent sale offers you double value. An extra bottle of extra-effective, extra-economical Pepsodent antiseptic for just one cent when you purchase a bottle at the regular low price. But you'll have to hurry, for remember that this special Pepsodent antiseptic one-cent sale is good only so long as a limited supply lasts. Be prepared to help fight colds and sweeten the breath with Pepsin as antiseptic. Phone your nearest drug dealer for your special one-cent sale combination package now, tonight. <laughs> and
And now may I present that charming Warner Brothers star. You liked her in Captain Blood, you loved her in Four of the Crowd, and you adored her in Robin Hood, Miss Olivia de Havilland. Thank you very much, Bob. And may I say that I adored you and give me a sailor. I liked you and thanks for the memory. And uh, I heard your broadcast last Tuesday night. <laughs> I know, Olivia, we covered that. But I want, to, uh, I want to welcome you to our Pepsodent party anyway. You'll find this a little different from the other shows. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yes, I can see what you mean. But you know, I heard you on some other program uh, the other day with a crooner. The guy that owns a racetrack or so with a... What's his name again? That's oh, a... yes, yes. Now, let me see. I know what you mean. I, I can't think of his name either. Let me oh, see. Oh, come now, Olivia. Think hard. Uh, uh, maybe this will help you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's on the tip of my tongue. Don't <laughs> 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 See, they don't know either. <laughs> Well, anyway, you were different on that program. What was that you did on that program? Oh, that I boss. You what, Olivia? I, I boss. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard it. <laughs> so did my cat. She's been missing ever since. Ah, <laughs> oh, but that was a lot of fun, Bob. It's always fun working with him. Yes, he's a very clever fellow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's so easy. He's so easygoing, like his horses. <laughs> I like him. He took me down to his racetrack. Yeah, he took me, too. Hey. Uh, what picture are you working on now, Olivia? Well, I'm on a vacation now, but I just finished a comedy picture with Dick Powell called Hard to Get. Oh, well, I just finished a comedy picture with Shirley Ross called Thanks for the Memories. And I just finished a commercial announcement for Pepsi and Antiseptic. You can't squeeze me out. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. <laughs> Boy meets girl. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what are you doing on your vacation, Olivia? Oh, I've been having a lot of fun. I've been spending most of my time at the dentist. Well, that's a nice place to spend a vacation. Did he hurt you much? No, not at all. He gave me gas, and I had a wonderful dream. As a matter of fact, you were in it, Bob. Really? Say, was I in your dream too, Olivia? Well, come to think of it, Bill, you were. Say, Goodwin, do you have to follow me every place I go? <laughs> what was he doing, reading the gas meter? <laughs> Oh, anyway, it was the silliest dream. I was right on the Warner Brothers lot. And that's where I met you, Bob. Yeah, wait till Paramount hears about that. <laughs> I don't think Warner Brothers will like it much either. <laughs> I wrote the dream down and I brought it with me. Would you like to act it out? Well, I don't know. It's... But, Bob, you and I play a very romantic love scene at the end. Yeah, well, I'll have to think it over. What am I saying? Say it! Uh... <laughs> Okay, let's go begin. Here's a skinny. Take, make it dreamy. Anything. Come on. Everything seems to be getting curiouser and curiouser. Where are we? One side, lady. Quiet on the set. We're shooting four daughters. <laughs> Say, so you missed one. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay, folks, you can go ahead now. Come on, Bob. We're wanted in the producer's office for a story conference. And uh, here it is. <laughs> How do you do? You're right on time. I'm just leaving. <laughs> but what about the story? I can't tell it to you now. Well, why not? Shh. It's a mystery story. <laughs> then how are you going to produce it? Ah, so you're wondering too? <laughs> He's sending his brain back tomorrow for retake. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. And the technicolor. <laughs> I shall read the scenario of my next picture. Scene one, fade in. Close up, fade out. <laughs> But well, who's in that coat-up? No one. We had to save money, so we eliminated the actors. <laughs> Quiet, everybody! As the curtain rises, nightfall is creeping. Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Quiet, everybody! <laughs> the scene. Close-up. Fade in. 
They all had two cups of sugar, three eggs, and three eggs. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's the name of this picture? We're going to call it Angel Cakes with Dirty Faces. <laughs> the final scene. Paid in, close up. Enter the hero. Quote. Was Brennick and the slightly tall said Geyer and Gimbal in the wave. <laughs> All the bimsy were in the Dora Groves and the moon breath out gray. Unquote. <laughs> The end. <laughs> well, don't stand there and stare at me, Jake. <laughs> Say, uh, <laughs> Olivia. You know, this is a very silly dream you're having. Ah, yes, but now we're getting into the romantic part, I promised you. Oh, you mean this is the part of the dream I say, Olivia, I love you? Yes, in fact, you put the sweet nothings in my ear. Yes, then I hold your hand and become amorous like this? Yes, Bob. And then I make love to you? Yes. And then what? I don't know. I laughed so hard I woke up. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. I enjoyed walking in your sleep. Thank you, Bob. It was fun being here. And before you go, I'd like you to hear our up-and-coming band leader, Skinny Ennis. Skinny Ennis? Mm -hmm. Isn't he the boy who sings as though he just stepped out of a cold shower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's him, Olivia. The new rage of the dance circuit. Restless Skinny Ennis playing and singing at long last love. <laughs> Was it an earthquake or simply a shock? Is it a good title to or merely the mark? Is it a cocktail with feeling of joy? Or is what I feel the real cause? Last love. Here's brand news for the bargain wise. You can now get two full 50 cent bottles of Pepsodent antiseptic for just one penny more than the regular price of one bottle. Pepsodent is making this sensational offer for two reasons. One, they want more of you to become familiar with Pepsodent antiseptic. For once you've tried this finer, more economical product, Pepsodent feels sure you'll agree that it is far superior. That from then on, you'll use Pepsodent antiseptic regularly. Two, regular users swamp us with requests for this great money-saving sale so that they could stock up on Pepsodent antiseptic at a record low price. Therefore, to introduce Pepsodent antiseptic to new users and to satisfy popular demand, during the great Pepsodent antiseptic one-cent sale, you are offered an extra full-size bottle of Pepsodent antiseptic for just one cent when you purchase a bottle at the regular price. But hurry, take advantage of this startling offer at once, for this sale is limited. It positively will not be repeated this year. Well, there's the simple story, Mrs. Homemaker. The rest is up to you. And here is Bob Hope's version of James Partners and Dance. Change partners and band. Say, Bob, Bob, where do you see these girls? They're beautiful. Yeah, I know, Bill, but we've been driving quite a while for a blind date. Don't you know any girls in this state? <laughs> well, Bob, Bob, we ought to be there any minute now. I know, Bill, you told me that 22 miles ago. I don't want to be too inquisitive, but we've been passing a lot of cattle. Tell me, what does my girl look like? <laughs> Well, Bob, my girl has the most gorgeous figure you ever saw. She used to pose for radiator cat. <laughs> yeah, but what part of the car did my girl pose for? <laughs> well, she's a swell dancer. Yeah, never mind that. Just tell me, what movie star does she resemble? Movie star? Well, let's see now. Uh, did you see The Awful Truth? Yeah. See, everybody saw that, didn't they? <laughs> Just a minute. Just a minute. We've been driving two hours. We've had two flat tires, and it looks like I'm going to get another one. Now, look. Tell me, Bill. 
What color hair has my girl got, if any? <laughs> well, if I remember, Bob, her hair is sort of a plaid. <laughs> Right, plaid. Is that new? <laughs> oh, what are you complaining about? The last girl I got, you had as many teeth as my girl. Yeah, that was the trouble. She was all teeth. <laughs> she had such big buck teeth, she could eat an apple through a picket fence. <laughs> Say, the only, the only thing missing was a saddle. Say, didn't I... <laughs> Didn't I see you running at Del Mar this year? <laughs> Bill, what's my girl's name? Esmeralda Emirat. Esmeralda Emirat, yeah. Sounds like a tobacco auctioneer. <laughs> well, my girl's name is Hetty. Hetty Emirat. Yeah. That's good. Hetty Emirat. Oh, here, here we are, Bob. Yeah. Well, what are we stopping in front of this barn for? This isn't a barn. This is a house. Well, what's that big goat doing in the window? That's Esmeralda's father. <laughs> if that's her father, what's her mother look like? Bob, do you see that cow standing over there in the corner? Yeah. It isn't a cow. <laughs> well, I'm here. I'll suffer. Let's go in. Oh, come in. <laughs> Good evening. Step right in, boys. The girls be right down. <laughs> Want to play some poker? <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Emirates? This is the fellow I was telling you about, you know, from the from the Pepsodent program. Oh, how do you do, Amos? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, come right in. How's Madam Clean? <laughs> you can tell he listens. Uh, is is Esmeralda ready, Mr. Emirates? Ready? He's been ready for thirty years. <laughs> By the way, boys, uh, just set your coat right over there. It'd be ten cents. <laughs> While we're waiting, would you like to shoot some dice? <laughs> Let's get a little action around here. <laughs> you care for a cold drink while you're waiting? Oh, thanks, Mr. Emrat. Don't mind if I do. Uh, soda pop or a bottle of beer? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. <laughs> Pops and nickel and beer, ten cents. <laughs> I'd like to play a little roulette. No, I don't gamble. You're taking my daughter out, ain't you? <laughs> uh, how about a raffle ticket? How much is it? Three dollars. I told you I don't take any chances on those things. You ain't taking no chance. We got the winner picked already. <laughs> oh, well, then I'll take... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Say, will you please tell the girls we're waiting, Mr. Emirat? Oh, don't be so formal. Just call me Emirat. <laughs> hey, Eddie! Goodies here. <laughs> Hello, Hattie. Oh, your friend, Mr. Mayer. Oh, yes, you know him. He's that very funny fellow on the radio. Really? Yes. Well, he looks awfully young to have five daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, well, I like her even after that line. She's snazzy. Let's go, Hetty. Now, wait, Bob. We have to wait for your girl. Oh. Uh, oh. Ma, it's 8.30. Let Esmeralda out. <laughs> Don't let this sucker off in the horse. He's wiggling. Hurry down in a minute. I'm having trouble with my hair. What's the matter? Can't you fix it? No, I can't find it. I wish I could get lost. Well, you get a box here. I am. Let's cut a run. Say, Bill. Yeah. Bill, she's got her face on upside down. <laughs> Come on, Bob, Bob. You let's go over to the bite of we jam going split a big apple. <laughs> Gee, she's cute, isn't she? From what angle? <laughs> Listen, good when you got me into this, what do you say we change partners right here? Oh no, nothing doing. Hetty's my girl. I wish mine had a Hetty. Let's go. <laughs> well, well, here we are. Take it, take it, five cents each. Get your blackjacks here. Step right up, boys. You can't have no fun without a blackjack. <laughs> nice place to come to relax. I wonder what time they carry out the wounded. <laughs> Say, Bob, aren't, aren't you afraid that someone will steal the car? No, I got the crank right here with me. <laughs> hey, Bill, there's Skinny Ennis. Hiya, Skinny. Hiya, sucker. <laughs> 
I wonder how he knew. Come on, Bob. Come on, be this day. Oh, okay, carefree. <laughs> Yes, do you always dance like this? Oh, no. Sometimes I move my feet. <laughs> well, when you have time, will you move them off mine? I don't mind just stepping on my feet, but don't try and put my shoes on. <laughs> Hiya, Bob. How are you getting along? Oh, Bill, change partners and dance. Oh, look, here comes my city boyfriend. What, you mean that black mustache with legs? <laughs> what are you doing with my girl, you tackle wrestler? <laughs> Your girl? Who are you? I'm a talent scout for Ripley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to turn the lights out so that everybody may change fun. One, two, three, out. Oh, boy. This is my chance. Hetty. Oh, Hetty, come here. Let's slip out this way, right through this door. Ah, at last we're alone. Kiss me. Say, darling, what is that thing on your lip that tickles me so? Ah, so you're wondering too? the memory to feel you listened in has really set us right just lend your ear next Tuesday we'll return to that same night and thank you so much thanks for the memory Olivia you were grand someday I will appear with you in pictures even if I only hold a spear and thank you so much Thanks, folks, for both those nice letters. I shouldn't ask one more thing of you. But remember, your druggist won't love you. If you should fail, is one cent fail. Hey, Bill Goodman, what goes on here next week? Well, Bob, our special guest is Miss Madeline Carroll. Skinny Ennis and his band will be here. Jerry Colonna. Our swingster, six hits and a miss. And, of course, uh, Bob Hope. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> on tonight's program was At Long Last Love by Cole Porter from the musical production You Never Know. Until next Tuesday night at the same time, the Pepsodent Company bids you good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.